just a normal family. A little awkward. Sometimes weird. Wait, did I say normal? Oops, my bad. Stick around. Get to know us. We have Cheyenne and Tyree. This is Savannah. I'm Michelle. And this is The Shellville Life. Michelle here welcome back to my channel and let's just jump right in okay so the unfortunate thing that happened to me was well let me give you a backstory the place where I was I wasn't happy at and I didn't tell you guys that or anything because I'm just like let me do what I need to do to get myself out of the situation when I first went into the interview it felt really weird but of course you're going to a new job expecting things are going to be better than the previous job and I understand no place is not going to be perfect I know that I've been working for years I'm 46 years old I've had many jobs I do get that you're not gonna get along with everybody so I understand that I'm not looking for a perfect position even though I wish I could have one anyway I know that going into jobs right so I'll just give you a little backstory about the people who own the practice so the doctor he of course he was the dentist and his wife I guess is a lawyer but she's not a practicing lawyer and she would always say things like oh when I had to call this company I had to put on my lawyer hat and so she would always throw that in people's faces and say stuff like that and okay whatever he definitely was the head of the household and I'm not knocking anybody's family dynamics if that's how your family is run or that's what you're used to okay whatever but I was just raised differently where the man was the head of the household and not that the man is in control and you know the women you know do what I say whatever nothing like that but I just have different views and it doesn't make me right or wrong or them right or wrong I'm just different. so anyway she would always tell him what to do and when we would have staff meetings it's supposed to be about how the doctor feels and what the doctor thinks we need to change and whatever right so she would come in and she would say things and he would try to talk and she'd be like wait a minute not to interrupt you but and then he not really get a chance to she was the office manager but she didn't come in every single day when the husband and wife work for the practice it's never good for the staff i worked at many dental offices and every place that i've been to that had the husband and the wife whether he was the doctor and she was the hygienist or he was a doctor and she was the office manager or whatever it's never been good on the staff because it's just never been good either they're fighting and arguing and we feel it and sense it and it makes the day not good for us or the wife wants to take control of what the doctor's telling us to do and so it's like who do we listen to they're both our boss so you know it's just never good for a practice never good in my opinion she controlled everything and like I said their family dynamics whatever I just want to make sure I keep throwing that disclaimer out and I found out that when they got married he took her last name so to me when I found that out it was like oh everything made sense everything made sense once again that's her, that's their family dynamics. I was just raised differently. Not only that, they were very snooty. They wouldn't want you to say the word cancellation, but she was serious when she said this. Well, we don't want people to think that people cancel on us. People cancel all the time in the dental field. Do we like it? No, because it's hard for us to fill the schedule, but things happen, people get sick. They didn't want you to say the word cancellation. They wanted you to say the word reservations. Honey, if I hear the word reservation, I'm thinking I'm going on vacation. They would tell us to tell the patient, oh, I'll reserve a time for you this date or this date. And, okay, I knew this going in, okay? She said she wanted me to change my verbiage. And I agreed to this because I'm like, okay, well, this job seems pretty decent, okay? And they're paying, okay? It's not too far from the house. The hours are okay. I went into this knowing, but I told her, I've been in the field almost 20 years. These are the words that I'm used to saying, so give me a minute to try to change or whatever. And she said, okay. But it was like three days into it, 
and they had the word reservation. I don't say the word cancel. They had that like taped to my desk. And then when I'm talking to patients, there was another guy that in management that he sat behind me, totally annoying, but he would roll over and he'd point to the word no cancellations, don't say it, or point to the word reservations instead of saying the word appointment. And just little things like that would get on my nerves so bad. And I know it may seem like it's nothing and I'm not going into too much detail because they don't even matter anymore. I'm not there. It's just little things like that that kept building and I'm like, you know what? I am really not happy here. These people are crazy. And if they want to run their business that way, the doctor has only been in practice, I think a year and a half. This practice is new. And just the way they are doing things, I get every dental office is different. So if you're going to work there and agree to work there, you got to agree to their terms, which I did. And I did it. I tried my best. And like I said, I'm not going into more detail on everything, the crazy wackadoo things that they thought <laughs> that, you know, they could get away with, with patients. I'm not even going to go get into that. Instead of me complaining and being mad, I went to work, you know, smiled, tried to do their little thing, whatever. And when you answered the phone, they wanted you to say, so was it, thank you for choosing and then the dental office name. This is Michelle, how may I help you? Okay, I get that also, but once again, I told her going in, I come from 20 years of saying one thing, saying the word cancellation, saying the word, I don't know, just different things that they didn't want me to say anymore. 20 years of doing what you normally do, what usually every dental office does, it's going to be hard to try to change it for one. Have you guys ever heard of going to a dental office and saying your reservation scheduled? And, you know, what are you going to think? If they say reservation, you're going to think you're reserving a hotel room. I don't know. I knew I wasn't happy and I knew I could not see myself there a very long time. They were very condescending about things to me at times. Like I'd be sitting down at my desk taking care of the patients and they'd watch me or if I answered the phone like, well, what did you tell that patient? You know, and I'd repeat back what I say and they're like, Oh, okay, because I thought you said this. No, I said this. And so just every little thing they try to pick apart. If I'm sitting down at my desk, the doctor will come and he'll kneel down like I'm five and he'll say, well, you know, well, maybe you shouldn't have said it that way. Maybe change it. And it's just, it was just too much, too much. And what I found out later is they have had over the year and a half that he's bought this practice, they have had seven people, seven, count it, seven people like me that has been there and that are no longer there. So you know it's not just me. Instead of complaining and or walking out mad and upset because sometimes I really get like, Ugh, I just wanted to strangle all them people. I'm like, okay, let me look for another job. I went on an interview on my lunch break on my unpaid lunch hour, a place that was close to the job that I was at, right? November 14th, 2018, my unpaid lunch break, I went to an interview. Everything went well. And in the dental world, when they like you, they want you to come back for a working interview. And then after that, they'll hire you. So I don't like the process. I feel I should go in, you talk to me, you like me, hire me, whatever. That's not how it is in dental. I had a working interview scheduled for Tuesday, December 4th. I was actually going to call in, use one of my sick days, take that day off and go to the working interview. Like I said, I went on this interview on my unpaid lunch break, made it back to work on time, didn't say anything to anyone, okay? So this was November 14th. November 28th, yes, I remember the day. I come in for lunch and the doctor's sitting at his desk and the way we come in, came in through the back and we come in through the doctor's office. And so the doctor's just sitting at his desk and usually he'll say, how was your lunch? A little chit chat like that. He didn't say anything, he just looked at me and shook his head like, okay, whatever. So I go to my desk and I clock in and I think I checked the patient or two in, I don't know. And so he's coming to the front and so the printer was right by me. So he's printing out papers and I don't know, y'all, I started getting like a weird feeling and I'm like, okay. Came back again and grabbed the papers, went to his room and then he came. <laughs> you guys, and I'm laughing because this is comical because remember when I told you how their family dynamics was, how the wife ruled everything? Well, he would always be like behind her and she would talk, he would agree to what she would say, whatever. So it was like roles were reversed. He never gave me that manly vibe about him. He just didn't. So it was kind of comical when he came up to the front desk and he said, Michelle, and he hit his hand on the desk like that. He said, Michelle, I need to talk to you. And it was all stern. And then I'm 
it was kind of funny to me because I had never seen him like really serious and like, you know, take control and take charge. So I'm like, okay. So I get up and I go to his office. He closes the door and he said, I have my wife on a phone. I just have her here listening. And <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, yeah, because your wife's the boss, you know, she needs to know everything that's going on. So he said, did you have an interview at Dr. So-and-so's office? And my heart dropped, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm a grown woman, I'm not gonna hide and lie about it, you know? I said, yes. And he said, so you lied to me and you took time off? I said, no. First of all, wait a minute, let's go back. I went to that interview on my unpaid lunch hour. That has nothing to do with me working here. Well, yes it does, it's a breach of contract and I'm letting you go. It was just like, it was a shock but at the same time, it was comical because I have never seen this guy like take control, take charge. He was always like mousy and just totally not in his personality. And I could see why he had his wife on the phone because I'm sure his wife said, oh, make sure you say this, do this, be this way because I've heard her tell him things like this before, right? So I'm hearing him talk and I'm pretty much, I'm like, you know what? You don't have to say anything more, I'll sign. I was chuckling kinda and it was a relief cause it's like, I'm done with these people. But at the same time, I couldn't believe that, you know, that happened and he also said, so breach of contract, we expected you to work here, you agreed to work here. First of all, in the state of California, it's an at will employment. They can fire me for whatever reason. I can quit for whatever reason. I never signed a contract that said, hey, I'm going to stay here. That was just bogus. I went to the front, grabbed my purse, and I walked out, and that was it. So I didn't know how they found out at all. I'm like, how in the world this, did these people find out? This doctor that I interviewed with <laughs> on my unpaid lunch hour, I keep saying that because the whole thing boggles my mind. I mean, it's my unpaid lunch break, and how are you gonna let someone go, you know, whatever, it just didn't make sense to me. Everyone that I talked to about it was like, wow, they were wrong, and I'm like, yeah, I know. So the dinner world is huge, you guys, but apparently it's small. So what I didn't know, this doctor and the doctor that I was working with are colleagues, and I guess this doctor was talking about, oh, he's excited about, and I found this out later, he's excited about the person that he has coming, whatever, so they was talking, and he gave my name. First of all, that made me upset because if I'm interviewing with you, and I tell you don't contact my previous employer, why would you say anything? Why? You had my information on the resume, you knew I worked there, but then yet you're going to say something. So I found out later that's what had happened. Well, if this place found out and they let me go because I went there on my unpaid lunch break and I didn't want to be with their office anymore, pretty much they were offended because I didn't want to be there anymore. So I'm like, if they let me go because of that, this place that I'm supposedly going to, I'm not even gonna go to the working interview. And I wasn't even gonna call her. And then she called me and she's like, no, we, we really don't, don't wanna cause any problems between the doctors, so you go ahead and stay with your doctor. I said, first of all, and I told her what happened, and I said, number one, when I went to you guys for an interview, I told you guys, do not contact my current employer. You guys knew I worked for him, and still you guys said something. So in light of that, I wouldn't want to work for your company anyway. That was that, and I was stressed about not having a job. I did have savings, so that's what we lived off of for a while. And then, of course, I was going on working interviews, so I think there was a video two videos before this where I was at home a lot, but then I would say I went to work. I did go to work, but it was like a working interview. So one of the places where I did a working interview, they hired me. I started the day after Christmas, which was weird because most offices are closed the day after Christmas, but whatever, got another job. Just thank God for that. I knew I would get another job soon. It was just, I was just stressed. That's the reason why I did not pick up the camera because I just was focused on that. I was upset and angry, even though the whole thing to me was comical and kind of like, these people are crazy. And it was a relief to get from under them. I was still really livid that they would do this to me because how dare you, I'm on my unpaid lunch break. I did not take time off. I didn't ask to leave early. I was upset over that and stressing and I'm the head of the household, so mortgage, car payment, food, gas, I mean, everything you know, I supply for house. And today is, I've actually been there two and a half, two, three days now. I started earlier this week, today is Saturday. So 
yeah you guys I'm back working um so even though I was stressed whatever in the beginning I kind of enjoyed my break having time off but then I got really bored because I'm like I need to do something that's the unfortunate event that happened yeah like I said I wasn't vlogging I didn't feel like picking up the camera because I was stressed and I was focused and even though a lot of times talking to you guys and vlogging is therapeutic I just didn't want anything to do with it at that moment because I needed to focus and buckle down and get to business. Yeah, here we are. And like I said, hopefully I'll be putting out more videos for you guys. Um, things are better. I'm in a better headspace. And yeah, so my other two children, Diane doesn't work at Pizza Hut anymore. She actually has a job in a dental office. She got her first dental office position and she's loving it. And the cool thing about this job that she is at, you guys, so I went on an interview there and we couldn't come to agreement because I've been in the field 20 years so I know what to ask for as far as pay and if they don't pay that then I'm sorry I can't accept you a lot of doctors want to give you low pay or they say they can't pay you and but they want you to do the work that you've been doing for years and the work that you're licensed for I just know I know better so we couldn't come to an agreement but the office manager she was really nice and bubbly and I'll keep your number and if I hear of anything and I'll call you whatever so before I left I told her I said okay well I'm licensed and I know you guys are looking for an RDA but would you be willing to someone just out of school who doesn't have an RDA license yet but is looking to get it and she's like yeah we might do you know someone I'm like yeah my daughter so I gave her Cheyenne's contact information. She called Cheyenne that same day. Cheyenne had an interview there the next day. Then I think she had a working interview there a couple days later or something like that. And she got hired. So yeah, it's funny how things work out. And I tell her, I'm like, tell everyone how you got the job. Not to put me in it, but to show how God used me to give her that position because that was totally God. I had looked for most of my job through Indeed and that's how I found it. And Cheyenne said she didn't see this one. I don't think she would have ever called this place or even applied. Maybe they wouldn't have even given her, I don't know. But I'm so happy the way how things worked out. So yeah, she's been there for a while now. And also for Tyreek, another update, he no longer works at Little Caesars. He works for UPS, you guys. The truck that brings our Amazon packages sometimes, yeah. I have a cousin whose husband works there and he's been there for years and I'm pretty sure he's a driver now. He started out in the same position that Tyreek is in. From what I heard, it's really hard to get on there and you work your way up. So Tyreek is starting out and he's loading the trucks, unloading the trucks, something like that. He's considered part-time, but he works Monday through Friday because it's not eight hours a day. He's liking it, he's hired all the time and he came to me the other day, he's like, mom, I'm getting, I'm." I'm getting muscles and I'm like okay whatever he's happy at his job he's tired when he comes home which I can understand so that is the update of the Shell Bell Life household Savannah's still Savannah she's still in 12th grade um, there's no updates for her she's doing wonderful in school she graduates in May so you guys you know stick around for that so yeah that is the update on everything that's been going on the reason why I did not vlog in like three weeks or maybe a whole month I don't know something like that thank you so much for watching hope everyone has had a lovely lovely holiday season thank you so much we appreciate your support we love you and until next time you guys